What are your tips for someone like me who wants to work internationally right now? And after that, you're going to get a job. Hello everyone! So today I decided to come out of my comfort zone and do a video outside and I'm really really embarrassed but I think I'll make it. And today's video is about a question that I've asked on my LinkedIn. So Marcelo França wrote, great job Marcus, keep it up. I'm now following you on Instagram and subscribe to your YouTube channel. I'm excited to see what you have planned for the future. So my question would be, what are your tips for someone like me who wants to work internationally right now? What's the bare minimum and what would be ideal in your opinion? And that is such an interesting question because I'm sure that many of the people who are watching my channel right now have the same question. When we're thinking about this question, we have to desiccate it and think about the main words that you're asking and find definitions for it. Because work could be work in an office, uh, in your profession from your home country. It could be something else. It could be uh, an internship, it could be washing dishes, uh, I don't know. We have to define internationally since it could mean that you're working in your country still but having contact with clients who come from abroad uh, and also having colleagues that are from other countries that you speak different languages during your work time and you don't necessarily have to be abroad for that. And we also have to think about right now because this is one point that might be the biggest challenge because if you're talking about tomorrow, the hurdles and the amount of luck you're going to have to have is much, much higher if you're talking about a different time frame. So I'll make some suppositions about how we're going to tackle this and going to answer the question in my opinion of what I would do if I were in your situation. So to make these suppositions, I visited your LinkedIn profile, saw that you have a bachelor's, that you have done a high school exchange program in Canada, and that you already have some experiences through internships. I'll also suppose that you want to come to Germany for starting your work abroad and that you want to work here as an engineer. So. I would divide everything in five points that you have to reflect and to research on. The first point would be legal aspects. And when we're thinking about legal aspects, the main point is what is the possibilities that you have for you to work abroad and for you to get a legal work permit to go to another country. I will list some of the possibilities that you might have if you're interested in coming to Germany. So number one would be a German blue card. If you have a salary above 58,400 euros per year, or if you are, for instance, an engineer or an IT person and whatsoever, if you have a salary above 45,552 euros in the year of 2023. If we're talking about people who are coming from Brazil, from India, from Russia, from Turkey, I don't know, that have different currencies and different costs of living, we also have to talk about how doable is getting a salary in this range. And what I want to tell you is that 45,552 euros is doable even for an entry-level uh, position here in Germany. So a blue card might be a very, very interesting visa option for you. The requirements are the salary, the education, and so on and so forth. You can get more information about that uh, in the side of the German uh, embassy or the German consulates uh, in your country, but also through Make It in Germany, they have lots of information about it. Another option for Germany would be for you to do a master's program here or to finish your studies here generally, because you're gonna have the possibility to finding literally any job that is in your field. And if you're receiving a amount of money that is uh, average for the position you're doing, it's going to be fine. So if you have a German degree, you can actually work here and find work as long as it has to do with your area of expertise and the salary is in the average of your profession. There's also going to be a new points system that is uh, being talked about lately in the German politics. It's not come into action yet, but it might be a very interesting option for people who are planning on working in Germany. And if you have a European citizenship, it is uh, going to work anyways. This is point one. 
Point two is to check on the employability. And when we talk about that, I just want for you to realistically say, do I have what it takes realistically to get a job in this other country right now? You might ask me, how do I know that? Well, my point would be for you to download 20 to 30 job descriptions that interest you and that you really check what are in those job descriptions the main hard skills and the main soft skills that you have got to have for you to fulfill this job. So it's no secret that you don't have to fulfill 100% of the requirements, but you can get a pretty good idea of what skills you already have and what skills you would more likely have to develop in order for you to get a different job in another country. So just download 20 to 30 job descriptions that interest you, see what you have and what is missing. And with this gap, you can see where you further have to develop yourself and also what your, your main qualities and what differentiates you. So also assess your own skills that don't necessarily have to match the job description for you to see where you can actually give more value. Third point would be for you to increase your employability. So do a plan to fill this gap that we are talking about and also see if you can get contacts in the country and uh, things uh, related to that. Fourth point would be for you to work on country specific points. So those could be language. So if you're planning to come to Germany, it would be very wise for you to start a German course in your own country and to reach an intermediate to advanced level so that even if you don't need exactly the language for your job that you're looking here, you can come by in a everyday uh, fashion much, much easier and to have a better time understanding people and integrating in the culture of the country you're intending to go to. Um, another point uh, would be for you to study in the country to gain some experience there or to actually have work experience in the country. So if you're planning to have a full-time job in Germany, it might be interesting for you to do some volunteer work or for you to come over for an internship. Maybe if you're doing a master's program here, just so that you have a possibility of presenting, hey, I have already worked for a German company or I have already had experience in Germany. I'm not going to go back to Brazil because it did not adapt to the culture. I already know how things work here and so on and so forth. This could be pretty, pretty valuable if you're looking for a job in another country. I'm just saying the example of Germany, but it's going to be the same for Canada, the US, England, and so on and so forth. And the fifth point would be for you to take all of these points you've reflected on and the information that you've gotten and for you to design a concrete plan of what you want to do. So give things a name. If you want to study in Germany right now, which course or university you want to go, which companies interest you, when do you want to do it, and how are you going to do it? Do you have to organize your, yourself financially to do this step? and to update your LinkedIn, your CV, start networking, connecting with people that interest you, see if you have any connections that might help you out during this whole process. There are many things to think about. The answer isn't as easy as one would think of, but if I were in your shoes, maybe the best solution for me would be to actually go to Germany, get a master's degree, in a field that interests you, do all of this research beforehand so after your master's, you already have all of the cards you need to getting a full-time employment in Germany. And another good thing about that is that master's programs or studying here in general doesn't cost much. And you can work 120 full days or 240 half days if you're not a citizen from the European Union. So you also have the chance of earning some money whilst you're here. And that's exactly how I financed my studies in here. So this would be my tip. Come to Germany, do a master's degree, 
do internships, have some work being done whilst you're studying, and after that, you're going to get a job if you really want to, because we need a lot of employees, and we're counting in Germany with people who are eager to work and to integrate into the country. So this is one point that I would say specifically for Germany, but I think all of the other tips apply for a variety of countries. So if you have any further questions, let me know and I'm pretty happy that I managed to do this video. I was so embarrassed.